Today we answer the question that nobody asks. Kia? Bless you? No, Kia. No, Kia the phone? You've got to respect the Japanese. They know the way of the samurai. And the Kia's from Finland. No, that's in Finland. We're talking about Korean cars. Oh, a car? Today, yeah. We're talking about a car? Yes, this thing. This? Yeah. Okay, let's Made go. in Korea. Kia is a brand that most people don't think about. Kia? Huh? Right? That was the start of this whole video. What's a Kia? When people think Kia, they think uh, a furball in a tracksuit jamming out to some tunes in a giant shoebox with wheels. The choice is yours. You can get with this or you can get with that. You can get with this or you can get with that. Not so anymore. Kia is a serious contender in the market now especially because of this car. This is the Kia Stinger GT2, right? That is correct. GT2, it's not the GT GTS, GT2. This is a GT2. Okay, I got confused about that. So this car can be a rear wheel drive car or all wheel drive, kind of like the Fusion Sport is all wheel drive. That has a V6 in it that's turbo. This has a V6 in it that's turbo. This one has two turbos, two air boxes. 3.3 liter V6 with twin turp skis. We got twin air boxes. We got twin blow offs over here, okay? That makes a horsepower for every day of the year. 365 horsepower with 376 foot pounds of torque. So it's true by turbo. That's right. Beamer talk. <laughs> <laughs> this is also designed by Beamer, kind of. Kind of. Sort of. One of the cheap, one of the engineers from BMW ended up going over to Kia. Yeah, the chief engineer for the Beamer M-Class cars came over to Kia and helped design this car. I can tell some things look like Beamer and this doesn't look like anything of the budget Kias of the past. Not good at all. Not, not at all. And the, technically this car is labeled as a compact executive car. Basically a luxury car. So it's a luxury car with a awesome sport package on it. Now with more room for activities. So it's a luxury sport car. That's right, yeah. And I want to touch back on the all-wheel drive system that you were talking about. Yeah. Um, you referred back to the Fusion Sport V6, yep. twin turbo car, all-wheel drive. Uh, that's a front-wheel drive bias car. Yep, front wheel drive bias. This car is a rear wheel drive bias car, um, just like a lot of the European all wheel drive systems are. You know, they're rear wheel drive biased. Mercedes is rear wheel drive biased. BMW is rear wheel drive biased. They all have all wheel drive, but it's biased in the rear. And this car oversteers. When you take it into a corner hard, it doesn't push the front end out, a la Mustangs. <laughs> uh, this car will actually oversteer around a corner even with the power off. If you just take corner hard with no gas into it, it'll it'll oversteer. We're gonna try a cornering G-Force test here. So this is a 90 degree turn. Let's see if I can hold the camera. Yeah, hang, hang on a little bit, here we go. I'm gonna try about this fast. And where you have the car pointing is where it's gonna go. Oh. <laughs> I think with that, guys, Let's uh, go take this thing for a ride and see what you think.
Oh. How's the back seat? Good. Adrenaline-filled day that was. I would definitely say so. There was uh, quite a few let's hold on to something moments. We definitely tested the limits of this car today and the limits are really high. So high in fact that I think this would probably be a Mustang around turns. I just bring up the Mustang because I have one. And this is a serious contender for a lot of other cars out there. This thing can take corners, accelerate, decelerate. It ticks all the boxes on the list really well. And it's a luxury car. Yeah. And the interior is phenomenal. And let's fire her up. Ah, we have the auto tilt wheel, by the way. This is memory saved. So as soon as you jump in the car, boom, it's going to lower to exactly your preferences. Same with the seat. Mirrors do the same thing. We do have a really nice button row right here. I mean, everything's really just scenically located. We have, you know, dual zone temperature with the sink. It's amazing. We got dual split screen layout. Okay. We're going to go in all menus. You want all the menus. Okay. Everything you need right there. Super nice. We have a super amazing Harman Kardon sound system in here. The, the Koreans, oh, they know how to think about the little things. If you have a phone, you can put your phone right there, boom, it can start charging right there, unless you're a user like me and you have an old phone, you need a new phone, it's like QF standard or whatever, to make your phone charge. I don't have that, I suck, whatever. Moving on from that, we have an amazing little, I'm kidding, there's actually, there's actually not much space in here. You have a little tray though you can take out, which is nice, I mean, but we don't need that where we're going. Oh yeah, my later reading, we'll ignore that. Anyway, moving on from there. Um, Kia has gone a long ways in their fit and finish. We were actually just talking about earlier the body lines on this car. It is amazing. It's perfect. The the one of the, the nitpicky things that I have is a lot of American manufacturers slap the car together. And what we're talking about is all these little lines in the car, like the hood line and all that, where they line up, you can kind of see where things are higher or pushed together or gapped out versus this car like a lot of i think it's very indicative of a lot of asian manufacturers mm -hmm. just have a higher quality control and their panels are perfect everything lines up and that just goes to show the level of quality that kia is now especially with this car this car is an answer to the question that nobody asked what if you took a korean car made it a luxury car that also goes incredibly fast and this car answers that question and fills that gap perfectly. For a lot of people, I think that might be really weird because it's a brand that nobody really knows about, like the big guys, Ford, Toyota, for example. And they're coming to the table with a luxury car and a sport car. It's just both of them in the same package. So this fills a really weird niche. and. At $53,000, a lot of people are want to go, well, I want to go buy a Toyota, or I want to go buy a Ford, or something like that. Name, brand, something I can trust. Well, Asian cars are some of the most reliable cars out there. Kia is actually on the highest, one of the highest on the list of reliability, and you're getting a luxury car and a sport car, car all in one. It's a jack of all trades, master of all of them, Yeah, really. Uh, you're, you're talking about reliability. I think they're the one of the only, or the only between Kia and Hyundai, they have the 10 year warranty and 100,000 miles on the powertrain. Yeah, I haven't seen that really with a lot of other manufacturers, 10 years of warranty on your powertrain, or 100,000 miles. Most people 
will kick a car out of the garage at 100,000 miles. So basically, you're going to be warrantied the whole time through, which is unheard of. And that just goes to show how much they uh, will back their reliability. Let's talk about the way it drives, transmission, you know, stuff like that. What did you think of it when you, when you were in the driver's seat? At first, uh, first reaction, metaphorically, little schoolgirl. Second reaction, adrenaline junkie. Third reaction, uh, scared out of my mind. Monkey uh, running as fast as I can uh, away from it. Like a monkey ready to be shot into space. And then fourth reaction, finally settling in. Uh, full on luxury, ooh, this is comfy. Fifth reaction, wow, I really want this car. I was gonna go a little different route there, but <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, the way the power comes on on this is absolutely phenomenal. Um, one of the things we didn't touch base on, it is a Kia, but this thing has launch control. Yeah. You know, that's, there isn't that many car companies out there putting actual launch control in the cars, you know, from the factory. Yeah. And it actually works pretty good. It's super easy to use. Um, I like, I like, sorry to cut you off. I like how they implemented launch control better than anybody else. Usually you have to select launch control. This right. car, you could be anywhere doing anything, be stopped, hit the brake, hit the gas, you're in launch control. It's that easy. It, is, it should yeah. be that easy with any car that has launch control. So in doing a little bit more research on the Kia Stinger, I found out that we were actually using launch control wrong the whole time. We weren't really using it. The car seems to have two modes. If you are just in drive and you're driving around or even in sport mode and you try the launch control where you hit the brake and then you hit the gas, it does hang the RPM at about 2000 RPM, which to me sounds like launch control. I guess it's not the most performance launch control that the car has. If you actually turn off the auto start stop on the engine, if you put it in sport mode, and then you turn traction control off, then you turn stability control off, you turn all that off, which is a lot of steps, then you get true launch control and there's a little message that shows up on the, the center display uh, in the gauges that say, that says launch control. Um, we didn't know that because the car just seemed to do a launch control when we hit the brake and the gas. Which actually I think is kind of cool because there's two, there's two modes. You have kind of an instant one if you're in the other modes and if you actually want to go the extra mile to turn everything off then you do have a more performance launch control as well. It gives you two options. The transmission in this thing actually works really, really well. Uh, you know, when we did our Camaro review, we kind of talked about an eight speed and paddle shifters and how weird it was gonna be. And yeah. that one really actually surprised us quite exactly. a bit. Same thing with this one. Actually, I think the paddles in this one react way faster than the ones in the Camaro. Yeah, I'm gonna say that this beats the Camaro as far as shifting speed and, and the crispness of the shift. The Camaro sounds cool because it has like this cool pop out of the exhaust when it shifts, kind of dual clutch Which style. Is badass. Yeah, it's amazing. Kind of sounds like a dual clutch, but this just shifts functionally better. It, it does. Um, all the modes, work phenomenally. You put it in sport mode, you definitely tell you're in sport mode. Instantly. Um, the steering changes, suspension changes, the way the pedal feel changes, the transmission feels totally different. They did a really good job of actually isolating all the different modes for what they are. Yeah. You know, I, I, there isn't, I've been into a handful of other ones that have drive modes, and you can't tell as many changes when you're going through them. Um, I'm going to fall to your car because the only mode that you really know when you change to is track mode. Yeah. Where, where this one actually has a, a huge change in it. Um, you know, one of the other things that we also found, because tons of people are doing it now, is the augmented engine noise. Yeah. And that was something that we were kind of surprised to see. The augmented engine noise is something that you can play with if you want to. You can turn it off and you can just have just what the car sounds like with the induction noise, the engine noise, and the exhaust sound, or 
you can bring it all the way up to enhanced. It, it, there's a level above normal augmented sound. Yeah. Uh, I think we, you know, we drove it around all day with it off. With it off, yeah. Because we enjoyed the sound that this car makes, both induction and the exhaust. It sounds really good with it off. With it on, it just sounds like somebody took the volume knob and turned it up. Yeah. Pretty Come much. In. It doesn't sound any beefier, throatier, nah, crazier. A little deeper, maybe. Maybe. But um, it's still not quite as natural sounding. And, you know, yeah. because we're both kind of gearheads, you know, we like that able to turn it off and, and actually just listen to it. And we were actually able to drive the car and just drive it by actually listening to it and not having to, you know, look at the tack. It's... Um, very much a driver's car. It is. This is very much a driver's car. I'm going to be kind of corny, but it's kind of a point and shoot when you're in the corners. It you is. Know, you, you get into a corner, you get set up, you hit the throttle and you come out, and where you have the car pointing is where it's going to go. Yeah, the car is incredibly predictable, and actually it kind of harkens back to, I think, like Gojira, yeah. the GTR, the all-wheel drive car. This kind of handles like that. It has the torque vectoring, has the all-wheel drive, and from everybody driving the cars and describing the GTR and everything, this handles like it, which is eerily similar. So with that, guys, we're going to end it off. I hope you enjoyed the humor in this video. I sure enjoyed it. Yeah, that was, it was fun for me. It was a blast. It was a blast. <laughs> and we had a blast in this car. Uh, if you want to see more Kias, let us know. This is definitely the, the, the coolest, I think, of all of them. But if you're interested in some of the other ones, let us know. That'll be it, everybody. We'll see you later. Stars. You ever got a gold star in school? I didn't think so. This car did. Mm -hmm. Tell you what. Okay. We're going to try out launch control. And the question today is, are Kias fast? Let's find out. <laughs>